What's up guys, so 2020 came and went. Today I'm gonna share with you, I'm gonna be sharing with you the part two of the top releases of last year. Of course, if you guys haven't watched uh, Designers, I'm gonna pop it up here, but today it's going to be all about niche. The best fragrances that the niche world of fragrances had to offer last year. If you wanna check out my picks, and I've tried quite a few, but I you know, narrowed it down to the top and the cream of the crop, the best of the best. If you don't know what they are, stick around, the video's coming up next. Welcome back to another video, I'm Max Forte. If you guys wanna know the best releases of 2020 designers, again, the video will be up here so you guys can check it out. This is a part two, which I'll be focusing on the niche releases of 2020. So the criteria here is the same as I use for the designers, which is of course the scent themselves. Um, I don't go so much for projection or long lasting, but if that's the case here, it's always a plus. The complement effect is always a plus as well, but these are basically the fragrances that I gravitated towards the most, meaning the fragrances that I wore the most and had you know, a great um, memories and emotions attached to it in 2020. They really spoke to me somehow based on the actual um, composition itself, if you will. So of course, uniqueness and exoticness of those fragrances will play a very high role here on these top choices. Now, I didn't just do a top 10 for you guys, actually the top 15, so I'm gonna cover five honorable mentions. These almost made the top 10, but not quite. You're gonna know what they are and why they didn't make the top 10, but without any further ado, let's hop right into that. First off, we have Amouage's Interlude Man Black Iris Edition. This is actually the first work of Renault Salmon, which is their new brand creative director. I did enjoy this fragrance an awful lot. I love the use of the iris here, which made this a little more tamed, a little bit more well-rounded, um, a little bit more refined, if you will. Not to say that the original interlude is not refined, but that is very uh, bold. It's very dark, like, like as we call here in the fragrance community, the blue beast, because that fragrance not only it lasts a long time, but it can have a very bold and rough, you know, especially in the beginning. It has a very uh, tough effect on people. It's got that oregano note with the woods, the resins, very smoky, like a, you know, like a smoky fire. It is kind of hard to wear. This one here, not so much. The iris really rounded things off, made it you know smoother and very delectable. I, I really enjoy this one. Almost made the top list. Another honorable mention here we have in the House of Boys 1920 from Italy. This is going to be Centenario, which is a fragrance that commemorates and celebrates their 100th anniversary. This is actually a very nice, also surrounding the note of iris here, along with some spices. There's also coconut here. It's a little bit tropical. It is extremely spicy though. It's has, it, this has a combination of cinnamon and cloves up top that can be again a little off-putting for some people. I love the uniqueness and exoticness of this fragrance. It is quite nice, very powerful, long-lasting. For that alone, for the creativeness that went into this fragrance, I have to give this as at least one of the honorable mentions. A very good fragrance. I love the brand of Boys 1920. This one here, quite nice but not one that I wore as much as I would like to wear, you know, last year. Next up we have from Aqua di Parma, this is Colonia Futura. And again, most of these fragrances I have reviews on, and if I do have a review, I'll pop it up here if you guys wanna check out and learn more about it. This one here in particular, not only did I cover this fragrance, but I talked about all the Aqua di Parma Colonias. Futura is actually a very sustainable, quote unquote, natural uh, put together fragrance. It smells amazing. If you like citrus aromatic fragrances, the citruses that were used here, were very natural to the actual elements. You can really pick out the lemons, the bergamots, um, the limes here. It's really up front and center, but it also has this fougere barbershop feel right in the composition. After all, this was modeled after the Colonia genre and family. So check it out, long lasting, really nice fragrance. But again, I have a lot of those fragrances in my collection. I've been wearing this type of genre for many years, hence the fact that it didn't make the, the top of the list. Speaking of fragrances that I have a lot of in my collection, you guys know how much I love Fougere slash Barbershop Field fragrances. And of course, the next honorable mention goes to Saharoff and the two fragrances that were released last year, Royale and Noir. Noir is a spicier version of the original, and this one here, Royale, is like a boozier, creamier version of the original. Both are great, I actually like to wear them blended. These almost made the top list, however, I'm still a big fan of the OG. I love what they did there, what, what George did as a creative director. He blended that fragrance beautifully with Claude Deer, which is the perfumer of, the, of this particular collection, making the Barbershop Fougere feel a little bit spicier and oriental with the use of a lot of oriental notes like vanilla, uh, oud, different woods and spices. 
that particular fragrance, the original is definitely my favorite. These are no slouch. They're very good, especially if you wear them blended, but not quite the top 10 for me. And the last honorable mention will go to this Australian house. And the fragrance I'm talking about is going to be Moonlark Ash. This is going to be Mihen Aromatics or Mihen Aromatiques. I do enjoy this fragrance brand a lot. It is extremely high quality, refined ingredients, sustainability. I mean, the type of alcohol they use here is of the natural source. Read about this company, guys. I'll have a link to all these fragrances below. So really, you guys can read about these companies and really understand what they're all about. This particular company from Australia is definitely one of the best when it comes to sustainability of their fragrances. This one here in particular, Monarch Ash, is around the note of Vetiver, which you guys know I love Vetiver fragrances. This one here is spices, vetiver, smoky, a little bit of incense going on. What this fragrance reminds me of, and extremely well concentrated, I mean, if you're looking at the bottle here, it is um, very bubbly, if you will. There's a high concentration of oils here. Uh, it's almost like parfum extract. And this stuff here lasts a long time. And what this reminds me of, it reminds me of Chanel's Sycamore, which has been reformulated to death these days. It's really very fleeting on skin. You really have to spray your clothes and you really have to, to have you spray that fragrance to get the most out of it. Not the case here. So if you do love that fragrance, if you're a big fan of Chanel Sycamore, but you miss the old EDT, definitely check this one out because this one here lasts a long time and it has the same kind of a feel and vibe that you'd get with Sycamore from Chanel. Enough of the honorable mentions. Let's hop right into the 10 favorite fragrance releases, Niche 2020. Funny enough, we're gonna go back to back here, Australian houses. This is another one from Australia, not from Mihan Aromatics. Now we're gonna talk about Goldfield and Banks, which you guys know I'm a big fan of this brand. This one in particular, Bohemian Lime. The reason why I think this is going to be the number 10 spot is because where I live, New England slash New York area, the warmer season here, which I think this is perfect for, you know, spring and summer, tropical weather, it's very short lived here. We're talking about three months, maybe four. So, you know, for the majority of the time here, seven to eight months, it's really cold here. It's brisk. It's a little gloomy. We have a lot of cloudy days. Not great for this one. Although you can wear this one to really transport you and take you to this tropical uh, place. You know, really, it's a journey. This fragrance is an extremely great tropical journey. Bohemian Lime is around the notes of finger lime, which is very particular and, you know, found in the Australian a coast again i have a full review on this one if you guys want to check it out this one is one that i wore a lot in the spring and summer definitely deserving of the 10th spot of one of the best releases uh niche of 2020. at the ninth spot we have a fragrance that was inspired by a beautiful region in portugal called sintra and the fragrance is obviously sintra from memo Pyrus, which i love i think they do a great job when it comes to leather fragrances this has a leathery feel to the fragrance but it's mostly a woody spicy vanilla fragrance with floral undertones i love this fragrance a lot and my wife, there's also an ambery undertone. There's like this sweet amber that envelops the whole composition at the base. I was testing this fragrance in the first impression video that I did. And after we put everything away, you know, me and my wife, I had sprayed this on me, but we're like, you know, what smells so good in here? Something's really amazing. And we came to find out that we both had sprayed this in our hands and this is what we were smelling. So needless to say, a great release. It leans a little bit more uh, floral and slash feminine to my taste. I love this on my wife. Not something that I gravitate to wear as much as I would like to, but it does smell incredible, especially in the dry down, the heart, you know, from the heart to the dry down. Amazing release from Memo Paris at the ninth spot from 2020. At the eighth spot, guys, if you like boozy fragrances, you know I love boozy fragrances. This stuff here will not let you down. Definitely one of my favorites from last year. This is Angel's Share from the house of By Killian Paris. This is going to be, you know, whiskey or cognac, whatever you want to say but it definitely has this boozy, spicy, creamy um, cinnamon facet. If you like fragrance like Bojan from Parfums de Marley, um, Ombre Narguilé from Hermès, you're definitely gonna enjoy this. This is long lasting, it smells incredible. And again, it's surrounding that note of the boozy uh, angel's share as the name implies, which is the loss of alcohol that you get in the process, the aging process. Speaking of that, there's a beautiful note of oak wood here also that adds this nice woodiness to the fragrance. Amazing at the eighth spot, Angel Share from By Killian. At the number seven spot, this is a fragrance that I really like what they did here. And this is from Parfums de Marly. They took that original DNA, which is that almond, heliotrope, creamy, spicy vanilla with almonds and made it more refined, just smoother, uh, even more mature, if you will. I'm talking about Pegasus Exclusive. I love the original, but I thought the original was a little sharp, especially in the beginning. It was something that I liked, but I didn't love. Now this one here, I really, really love. I think they did a tremendous job. This is a little spicier. It has the oud here in the dry down. It's a little woodier, a little darker. 
a little more mature, like I said, and definitely more masculine. I think Pegasus at times with that vanilla almond vibe reminds me of a Hypnos, Hypnotic, it reminds me of Hypnotic from Dior, could lean a little more feminine. This one, however, definitely gave it a more dark and masculine, mature facet to it, making it outstanding release from 2020. Pegasus exclusive, guys, amazing. At the sixth spot, we have a fragrance from a fragrance reviewer. Um, you might be scratching your head now and thinking, who is he gonna say? Which fragrance is it? So this is a fragrance that has a classic feel, an old world quality about it meets modern sophistication and attraction. Love the stuff. Could have been higher on the list, but again, it was unique enough, but not as unique as I would like it to be, but quite a great release nevertheless. This is going to be Gavitas Pro Alm from Naughton and Wilson from our own Mr. Smelly 77, AKA Dan Naughton. This is incredible, guys. Look at the sprayer, beast mode. This is, oh, it smells so good. Um, I love this stuff. My wife loves this stuff. And, and to be honest with you, my wife does not like the old school fragrances that I like, the Fougeres, the barber shops, but this stuff here, has this patchouli, vanilla, creamy, spicy vibe that is just uncanny. There's nothing like it. It takes the old world Fougere barbershop feel, patchouli vibe, but adds all these nice oriental components like the vanilla, the spices, the creaminess to the fragrance, making it really outstanding release from 2020. Dan, if you're listening, kudos to you. I can't wait to see. We talked a little bit off camera. We talked about uh, when we did our videos uh, of, you know, great timeless fragrances and you said that you're definitely going to be doing flankers of this fragrance perhaps a sport version uh, a darker version a gourmand version i can't wait to try some of the future gravitas for home releases because this one here definitely fire guys at the sixth spot yes at the sixth spot gravitas for home at the fifth spot this is a fragrance that when i tried this was absolutely utterly addictive i couldn't get enough of my wife was like what are you wearing it smells so good one of the best releases, hence the fact it's number five right now. I'm not huge on oud fragrances, but I'm growing to love oud even more and more, as long as it's done in a very subtle, smooth manner, along with notes that I love, like leather, for example. This is going to be a fruity, leathery oud composition from the house of Kieran NYC. Of course, we're talking about rose ink. So, so it is an oud rose combination but it has this addictiveness to it that is just uncanny, guys. The rose is surrounded, picture this, a, a, a supple, addictive, succulent rose that is surrounded by this beautiful suede saffron leather with spices and this sweetness, fruity vibe. It's like a fruity rose. Incredible, addictive is the right word, and it's definitely androgynous. This is something anyone can enjoy and will smell amazing. We'll get people coming back for you. This is incredible, guys. Check out Rose Inc. from Kieran Ice. In fact, check out the whole brand. I think they have amazing compositions, but I think this is definitely the, the, the crown's jewel, if you will, at this point. My favorite from the brand and for a reason. This stuff here, amazing. One of the best from 2020. All right, next up, we have a release from a house that's been quite busy this year. Of course, we're talking about the house of Amouage. This is their second entry here on this top video. At the fourth spot, this is definitely my favorite release from Amouage in 2020 from their Renaissance collection. This is going to be Meander. If you guys follow my channel, you know how much I love this and why I love this fragrance. The Cypriol, the Vetiver, the Iris. There's so many great notes here that I love, especially Vetiver. But there's sandalwood here. There's a lot of different components here that make this fragrance smell just incredible and very unique. Um, what I get out of this fragrance, if you guys haven't checked out the review, I'll pop it up here so you guys can check it out. This to me, it's like a fusion between different you know, fragrances. I get like a Dior Homme spicier, greener version of that fragrance. Also, we could describe this as a spicier, greener version of Santal 33 from Lalabo. Needless to say, a great fragrance. Again, one that I worked quite a bit um, for many months last year, You know, whether for the office or if I was going out. We didn't do much going out because of the pandemic, but every time I did, I wore this fragrance and it made me feel great. It gave me this sense of, uh, of power and just you know you know elevated my, my 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 mood and made me feel great you know we really needed those kind of fragrances and this one here did it perfectly guys meander from homage at the fourth spot if you haven't tried this whole collection it's definitely worth checking out but i think unclave and this one are definitely the best that the brand had to offer in 2020 but this one here amazing at the third spot this is a fragrance house that i absolutely love it's definitely one of my favorite brands niche that i've been following over the past three plus years uh, definitely in my top five niche fragrance houses right now that I just have a fragrance for every occasion and setting. This one here is one of their newest releases. They have a Himalayan Woods fragrance that they released lately. I shared with you guys um, 
on Instagram, but this one here was the last one from last year that they released. And this is going to be Sunset Oud from Amo Oud. Now this one here, as they so eloquently put, it's like a yin yang type of a fragrance, east meets west, um, dark meets light. It has some light citrus aromatic components, but also has some dark uh, components such as the oud, of course, a dark smoky vetiver facet, and of course, a beautiful dark leather uh, facet. That trifecta of the vetiver, the leather, and the oud makes this fragrance outstanding. I have to be honest with you, when I first started wearing this fragrance, I didn't love it so much, but the more I wore this fragrance, the more it grew on me, and the kind of effect it had on people. It's one of those uh, very powerful type of scents that will bring people in. This has a very head-turning type of effect on it. It's one fragrance that if you don't want to be dismissed, if you want to walk into a room and really get your presence felt, definitely check this one out. It is definitely one of my favorite fragrances of last year because of that effect it had on people. Every, try, every time I walked and left the room, that whole siage and how this fragrance played off um, you know, as I always say to you guys, fragrance is an extension of who you are, and I think this one here described, you know, the way I wanted to, to feel when I entered and left the room. So Sunset Oud at the third spot, definitely one of the best releases of 2020, no questions asked. At the number two spot, this fragrance here, I can describe it many different ways, but I think the best way for you to understand this fragrance is to let you know that this fragrance smells like a darker, spicier version of Jubilation 25 from Amouage. And if you love that fragrance, you know, how much of a superstar fragrance that is, you're gonna absolutely love this fragrance. And if you haven't tried it, you're gonna wanna get your nose on this, guys. I'm talking about Fragrance Dubois, which is a fragrance that I also became uh, familiar with almost two years now. And the more I dive into this brand, the, the more I try this fragrance line in this collection, the more I love this brand. It is, like I said many times, jokingly, this is like Tom Ford, you know, no constraints, carefree, just let's create amazing fragrances without not, not a care in the world, let's put together amazing ingredients and just, you know, unique stuff meets Raja Dove's quality of ingredients and blending. That's how I describe uh, Fragrance Dubois. So if you, you know Raja Dove, you know Tom Ford Private Blend, you know those are amazing fragrance brands. So this one here is one that you're not going to want to dismiss, guys. Incredible, plummy, boozy, spicy composition, beast mode sprayer. One of those fragrances that are attention grabbing, smells of, you know, high-class, refinement, um, luxuriousness, regal. I mean, all the top objectives you can think of describing a great juice, you can include in this one, guys. New York Intense describes a New York, you know, high life perfectly. I love this stuff, guys. Definitely one of my favorites of last year, one that I can't get enough of, hence the fact, number two spot. This stuff doesn't come cheap, but as you guys know, you get what you pay for. If you want something that's really gonna make you stand out, definitely check this one out. You're not gonna disappoint. All right, ladies and gentlemen, what could be my number one spot? And the great thing about my number one spot can also be worn by both men and women. It's definitely androgynous. It's one of those fragrances that will definitely have all the adjectives I talked about, head turning, presence, long lasting power, but the blend itself was just incredible, guys. And I'm talking about a fragrance house that I don't really talk about much here. I discovered this around uh, summertime of 2020, and this is one that I absolutely love and I'm glad that I got, it was the latest from this particular collection. I know there's another one that they released at the tail end of the year called How Fatty Cedar, but the one I'm talking about is How Fatty Leather. Now, How Fatty in of itself is a great line. It's very powerful, very long lasting, very attention grabbing, head turning, but the leather fragrance has something that I love here, which is a boozy plum. That boozy drenched plum paired off with leather. And of course, the woods and the oud here, the spices just makes this an outstanding fragrance. And what comes to mind when you spray this fragrance and you try it on skin, it's gonna remind you of two amazing fragrances. Plum Japanese from Tom Ford, Private Blend, now discontinued, and of course, bun number nine, Andy Warhol, with his face on it, which is also now discontinued. So, this has everything I love in fragrance. The booziness, the fruitiness, the woods, the spices, the long lasting, the power, the uniqueness, the exoticness. Just one word to summarize this fragrance, masterpiece guys check out how fatty leather if you haven't it is outstanding one of my favorites hence the fact that it's number one one that i just couldn't help but but love and wear as much as i could last year it can be a little clawing when it's you know warm out it's one that you probably have to go one or two sprays if it's really hot out 
But as soon as it hits, you know, full, full season winter, you can go crazy in this. You're gonna smell amazing. You're really gonna project and people are gonna love the way you smell. It's one of those, like I said, it's definitely gonna grab people. It's got this very attractive, sensual vibe to it given by the uh, spicy, uh, boozy plum. So guys, let me know in the comments, what were your favorite fragrances that you guys, you know, became in contact in 2020 when it comes to niche fragrance. I'd love to read your comments. Please go crazy in the comments. Let me know some other niche fragrances that I haven't mentioned here that perhaps I should check out. I'd love to read your comments and find new jams that I should always, you know, check out and bring forth so more people can have access to them. So thanks so much for your support. If you guys enjoyed what I do here, please don't forget to show your support by leaving a like, hitting the little subscriber for me, and of course, turning on the little notification bell icon so you get videos like these straight into your feed. As always, remember guys, fragrance is emotion to emotion. It's an extension of who you are. So be sure to choose your fragrance wisely, wear it where it truly moves you, and of course, wear it well. I'll see you guys back here with another video very soon. Take care.